in the car. He took me to church. I sat in the back of the church. I was nodding because I've been up two days in a row. And the man said to me, he said, God is calling someone. Yes, Lord. The doors of the church are open. And right now the doors of the church are open. Yes, Lord. And he said, if you know God or want to get to know God, stand up. If you're ready to change your life, stand up. If you trust God and trust me to walk you through a simple process of four things, he said, your life will be changed forever. Everybody was getting up and everybody walked and I'm still sitting in the back. He got on the mic again. He said, God is still waiting on one more person. I looked around and said, he ain't talking to me. <laughs> He said, God is waiting for you. And when I stood up, I walked over there and I leaned over to him. He said, don't play with God, boy. He said, if you're not serious, go sit back down. Come on. And you know, I'm one of them people, don't challenge me. <laughs> I said, who are you to tell me that I'm not ready? I'm ready. God is a Holy Ghost setup. God is a Holy Ghost setup. Because I said, don't challenge me. I'm going to prove him wrong. But God made me right. <laughs> After I walked up there and said that, I sat down. The next day, the pastor said, I'm sending you away to get cleaned up. I said, I'll be ready. Four o'clock came in the morning. I had to walk to this place to get a ride. I walked three blocks with a suitcase. They didn't get enough clothes for seven days. I'm walking with a suitcase, 4 o'clock in the morning, skipping. I'm going to get clean. That's what was on my mind. I'm going. I got there with nobody there. Nobody there. I gave my keys to my place to the fellas. They had the little party going on. They was like, "We, you sure? I said, y'all can have everything in here. I ain't coming back. I walked back in the house after mad because I walked those blocks with the suitcase. Nobody was there. I waited for two hours. Nobody showed up. I got back in the house. I called my son. I said, your pastor full of it. He said, what do you mean? I said, I stood out there from four in the morning to six and nobody showed up. He said, let me call him and see what happened. He said, go home and get some rest. I walked in the house. Everybody said, you back? <laughs> I sat there for a minute, and I said, yeah. They said, come on, here, take a hit. I said, no, I don't want none. I was mad. Right, right. right. I said, see, because that's what the enemy wanted. Yeah, yeah. He wanted me yeah. to give up on what God had for yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. So the guy said, listen, you sure you don't want none? This is some good stuff. I said, no, I'm good. My phone rung. And he said, um, did you go? I said, yeah. He said, good. He said, come back tomorrow. <laughs> oh, I said, this fool didn't just tell me to come back tomorrow, and I just went there. My son said, Dad, go. He said, I'll come get you this time. You don't have to walk. I'll take you. So my son came that morning, picked me up, took me there. The guy said, he said, listen, I just wanted to make sure you were serious. He said, people say all the time they're ready, and they're not ready. So I'm saying to someone in here today, I can want for you all day long. If you're not ready, it won't happen. And I'm going to tell you how that God worked on me then. When I got to New York, it was upstate New York. They sent me to a place called Blazenburg in Orange County, New York. When I got up there, they make you take a test. They do urine samples, drug samples. They told me, they said, you can't get in. I was like, why? They said, because you're not on dope, you're on crack. That's psychological, not physical. I said, I got a problem. I came here to get soft. He said, I'm sorry. He said, if you want to get in here, he said, I'm going to tell you what to do. He said, if not, you got to get back in the van and go back to Jersey. He said, go across the street. He said, go down and sit in the car. I'll come talk to you. I'm mad as hell now because I done came two days in a row and now I'm being sent back home. <laughs> right. Now I'm really, God was testing me to see how serious I was about walking away from the street. Mm. And when I got in the van, there was a gentleman sitting in the back of the van. He didn't ride over with me. 
Now this is the part where I'm telling you when I say the Holy Ghost set up. God is my witness. I never seen this guy in the, in the van when I came. He said, what happened, Mar? I said, they told me that I wasn't able to stay here because I don't do heroin. The guy told me in order for me to stay, I need to go get some heroin oh, and, and then come back. They'll test me. If it's oh, in my system, my they'll keep me. I said, man, I'm not going to give rid of one thing and grab another thing on me. <laughs> he said, well, you, you really, he said, well, he said, this is what I want you to do. He said, see that bodega over there? He said, go over there and buy two cans of beer. They're like 50 cents each. I said, I don't drink. He said, go buy the two cans of beer. I said, I don't have no money. He handed me a dollar. I went and got two cans of beer, y'all. Mindfully, I never drank. I don't smoke cigarettes. I just smoked crack when I was out there. I'm not going to tell you no lie. I drank one can of beer. I went back in and they locked me in there as an alcoholic. <laughs> one thing. <laughs> one can. That you one never, can of beer. That you didn't want. One can of beer I didn't want. I was an alcoholic. <laughs> I'm not making this up. I'm telling you the I truth. Believe, I, I looked believe. back in the van and thanked the guy and he was not there. <laughs> there was no guy there. So I know that it was Jesus that gave me that dollar. Right. It was Jesus that made the tape say that I need to be helped. Mm -hmm. It was St. Joseph Hospital. They kept me for eight days in that place. Mm -hmm. When I left there and went to Bladenburg, they made me a junior T.A. As a junior TA, I had to deal with all the issues of other people helping them. And I'm going to tell you now, the house didn't like me, y'all, because they thought I was a snitch. Oh, Lord. There were more drugs in that place than there are on the street. But during that time, I refused to dip and dab because God sent me there on a mission. And I'm not here to glorify drugs or addiction. I'm not here to glorify all the things that I went through, but to tell you that the deliverer of that same addiction problem I had, which was women, drugs, and foolishness, is the Lord our God. And the same God I'm saying right now is looking for someone in this room to change your life. He's looking to make a difference in your life. If you're that person, just come up here right now and let me pray for you. If you're that person, I can help you break that bond that's keeping you hostage. And I promise you, your tomorrow will be greater than your today. So if that one person that wants to be saved, stand up and come forward right now. And let the Lord our God make a difference in your life as he made in mine. I know God's real, people. And I'm a fact that I'm standing here living proof. He took me from the crack house the outhouse to walking in the White House. He blessed me with a business that I can help millions of people. Put me in a position to do movies, TV shows. Not only did he do it, we own our own network. It's not me, it's God's. And I'm blessed because I see the vice president of the television network in here now and also my assistant. Give a raising hand, Miss Monica. And my sister who's been sick and glad to see you. She still come to see your worship. How you doing, God? <laughs> see, God is a big God. And when you do trust God, and just like I said, I'm not here to glorify anything but God. All the physical things that God has given me is just physical. It could go away tomorrow, and I'd be thankful that I'm here today. Because when I was on that death path, that path had me on a course that wouldn't have me standing here. You might be here, but I might be laid there somewhere in a box where y'all talking about me instead of talking with me. But now that I'm here to say that God is a good God, I want to help someone today. I want to be able to put someone in a better state of mind. I want to be able to help someone walk a right life. I know we done did an altar call, but someone's holding back. Someone's not seriously giving in. You're waiting on somebody else. 
I was you. I'm telling you. I can sit out here and look at you, but I'm not going to call you out because you know why? You got to come voluntarily. You got to freely give as he freely gave. He freely gave his life that who should ever believe in him should have everlasting life. Who wants eternal life right now? Who wants eternal life? If you want eternal life, come up here. Let's pray for you right now. Don't worry about people. Don't worry who's looking. Don't worry about any of that stuff. If you need to be blessed, come up here. Deacon Matt, come up. What's your name, sir? Kurt. Kurt, you are now a new creature in Christ. Yes, Have you given your life to Christ? You, 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 would you rededicate your life to Christ right now? Yes. Pastor Hemingway, will you do the honors? Hold it. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Pastor, listen. We want to help some people here today. As I said when I opened up today, I don't want you to leave here the way you came in. I know more than Kurt right now needs a blessing. Yes. I know more than Kurt right now needs to get. I said when I first opened up, you're here today to shake something off of you and to shake some things up in you. If you want to shake off some things in you, stand up. Let's shake it off. Shake off what's holding you back. Shake off if you're holding on to bitterness. Shake it off of you. Holding on to unforgiveness. Shake it off of you. God cannot help you if you're holding on. So if you want a relief, this is the time to be relieved. Pastor, do your service. Mother with your children. Would you like to bring your kids up and let us pray for you and your kids? Here, I'll hold your song. Here you go. Give them that one. We, we consecrate this water for the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Yes, God. Just stand in your next mother. 
Mr. Hemingway, can you uh, bless this woman of God with her children? Yes, God. Yes, God. Evangelist, will you help them? Thank you, Lord. Or you can hope Evangelist Monica has them. Thank you, Lord. We're here to help make a difference. That's all. It's time to shake off some dust. Jesus said, if you go and they don't receive you, shake the dust off your feet. The devil, when I told you, when I opened the doors, if anybody remember what I opened up and said, I'm giving the enemy five seconds to get the hell out of this church. Five seconds to get out of here. Because we're not allowing you to stay in the bodies of these people. Welcome a new saved soul to the kingdom of God. See, what I want you to do, people, don't just come into this house. Give a service to God in this house. Pastor, you have something to say? Jacket, Marvin. Your baby sister. What is your name? Rosie. 
That's a good name. My grandmother was named Rosa, and my sister was named Rosa. So you got a good name. And do you know that God has been calling you, Rosa, to stand up and step out where you've been? My God. Do you know that God has a, 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 your name up there? You know what he's saying? I'm waiting on Rosa. I'm waiting on Rosa to remove the scales off her eyes. The world has been tricking you. The world has been leading you down a path to keep you from serving him. Are you ready to break that path? Are you ready to smash down the strongholds that hold you? Pastor Reher, are you ready to give your life back? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Yes, God. Hey. Hey. As I said to you in the beginning, this is not church as usual. This is not church as usual here. There is no usualness in what we're doing. Yeah, yeah. We follow the will of God, the word of God, and the way of God. Yes, God. I want everybody to welcome Kurt, welcome Mark, Martin, and work, welcome Rosa back home to the kingdom of God. Mother, are your children saved? Are they saved? God bless you. Thank you for bringing them today. Raise them up right and they'll grow up right for the kingdom. And I thank you. Right now, I just want to do a, a I, I know I didn't ask for a testimony in the beginning, but I just want to share a testimony. She might get mad at me when I call her out, but God says the Holy Ghost set up in here today. Somebody need to know the goodness of God and the realism of God. Pastor, don't you go nowhere. Stand here. <laughs> Stand here next to Rosa, because I want Rosa to know who just prayed for her. Yeah. How many people like to know, ten, uh, about 14, 15 years ago, when you heard Deacon Macklin read off that, I did a service for unity to bring gang members to stop fighting one another and have a truce. For seven years, we had a truce. I had 150 pastors that lined with me to bless these new. We walked up and down praying over people, laying hands over people. I had Jews, I had monks, I had friars, I had bishops, apostles, imams. They all came in support of one thing. Jesus didn't have to share his stage with anybody. It was all about Jesus the Christ. But when I met this woman right here, reach your hand to me. This woman right here was legally blind. This woman right here could not walk. This woman right here, could, I was so afraid when I gave 150 pastors nails, the friars had built a 10-foot cross. And each pastor got a nail and had to nail their differences to the cross. I gave her a hammer and I said, let me nail it for you. Because I didn't want her to hit her hand. She said, I don't need your help. <laughs> she took the hammer and nailed the nail in. She believed when she left there that she would see again. She believed that when she left there, she would walk again. I'm going to tell you how powerful God is. Not only did we pray over this woman, but right now I'm going to let her tell her story. I can stand here and I can say hallelujah. Even the doctors said I would never see again. I would never walk again. And the good name, the good thing about it is that it's all in black and white. They told me I wouldn't, but I told them that I would. They gave me their report and I told them I heard another report. They tried to get me to admit that I could not see, I could not walk, but I kept saying I can see. I can walk. Hallelujah. I can see today. I'm walking today. Hallelujah. The doctors got so mad with me, they didn't want to talk to me no more. They said, look, we're going to.
going to talk to your husband. <laughs> Mr. Hemingway. She's in the now. It ain't going to happen. But to God be the glory. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I just got one thing to say. This has been on my heart ever since we were riding down. Is somebody under the sound of our voice? You have an issue with unforgiveness. Somebody did you wrong. And you have problems with letting it go and forgiving it. I heard the man of God speak on telling me to come up, come up, come up. Let me tell you something. I was to the point no. that I was ready to commit murder. I started plotting well, and them. scheming I'm, I'm not on this them. individual. I'm not, um, and I waited till they went to sleep. And they were playing a certain song in the car that said, God still hears a sinner's prayer. And I wanted to say something, but God wouldn't let me speak then and then. Because I prayed, and I can say I was in sin because my heart was dark at that time. And just as I was getting ready to plot the murder, I looked up and I saw a man's hand on the wall. Just the hand. No arm. Do this and don't do it. I prayed before I got ready to plot because I didn't want to get caught. That's why I prayed. But God is a healing God. He wants to heal you everywhere that you are. That, that's set for you, amen? Sometimes when you be obedient to God, blessings come, amen? amen? And when you're obedient to him, God makes things in the process, amen? God works things in the process. Three to four years of pastor Elaine has been here. It's not easy, amen? It's not easy. So it's like, as, as the Bible says, you're going to have... Her ministers pray over her. And why we cover her? Because each each year the seed is going to be hard. Amen. It's not, it's, it's not over. Okay, the enemy is mad. Amen? Amen. Amen.